Today I am painting 7 very similar miniatures and each of them with a different paint brand. I am doing this to find out which paint brand is the best and which one isn't worth your money. Does it even matter? So these are the miniatures, basically the same, and these are the paint brands that we are gonna compare. Let's start with the one I like the most, AK Interactive. Comparing paint brands in a video is really nothing new, but by painting basically the same miniature 7 times and using different paint brand each time, we should get a good idea how much better or worse are certain paint brands. Now full disclosure, going into this video my assumption is that paint brand doesn't matter as much. Of course there are differences, but at the end of the day you can get very similar result with any hobby paint. AK Interactive is just that paint brand that satisfies you in every single way. These paints have matte finish, but not too much. The saturation is just right and there is just nothing wrong with them. For this entire video I am focused on layering. That's because it's a technique that any paint should handle. So the only thing that matters here is whether the paint covers well or not and AK Interactive has no issues with it. As you can see, you can get very far by simply using layering and edge highlighting. If you start from a dark base coat, there is nothing else you need. No washes, no wet blending or anything special like that. I already said that I like AK Interactive and that's for a good reason. It's super consistent and it won't disappoint you in any way. So here is the first squick, pretty good in my opinion. And now we can compare the rest to this one. Army Painter. If you asked me about Army Painter before making this video, I would tell you that it sucks. If you ask me now, however, I will tell you that it's fine. No, they are fucking dog shit. These paints are terrible and there is nothing that could convince me otherwise. No! Now obviously you might ask me, just why are they so bad? If you remember how I tested the cheapest paints I could find, the problem was that it was like spreading butter on your miniature. This usually happens if the medium is low quality or there is simply too much of it. Army Painter has exactly the same issue but not to such a high degree. So you are spreading paint on your mini, but it feels like you are spreading more medium without leaving too much color there. This means that the opacity of this paint is terrible. In the end, you'll see that the finished miniature looks kinda splotchy. Okay, now you might say that it's because I didn't shake the bottles properly, but I actually shook it to the point my arm started to hurt. I didn't even use the initial drops of paint to avoid accumulated medium on top of the dropper bottle. So I did everything for the paint paint to work properly, but it still sucked. However, it's still good enough to get a solid paint job. So anyway, using red and green didn't really go too well, but once I got to more light colors, it all started to work a bit better. The squick took me like twice as long to finish, but the non-metallic metal parts were pretty much the same as the rest. And sure enough, in the end you can get a decent result. So perhaps if you are getting new paints, I wouldn't necessarily go for army painter unless you are on a super tight budget, but if you already have these paints, they are enough. You know, after all, it's still just a f***ing paint. Citadel is pretty good. In fact, it felt amazing after switching from Army Painter. The opacity is great, it can take you just one base coat to cover everything if you wanted to, and as opposed to Army Painter, the medium is fine. The biggest issue with the GW paints is that you are paying premium for something that is not a premium product. And don't get me wrong, I like them and they are good, but comparing them to other brands, there is just nothing extra. Well, maybe contrast paints are fantastic for airbrush, but other than that, standard paints are just that standard. At least that goes for majority of their paints, but when it comes to some of their lighter colors, they are super chalky. So don't buy light citadel colors and especially white. I also feel like these paints need more thinning than other, because they feel quite dry. Because of that, you might also feel like the paint isn't leaving your brush as easily, but that's not a huge problem. Other than that, pretty good, but expensive. This paint case has been sent to me by today's sponsor, Frontier Wargaming. You can smell the wood. With this, you can quite literally take your painting desk anywhere you want. Because there is a built-in lamp inside, this is a great solution if you travel. My transportation solution used to be a bag for paints and a backpack. That's no longer the case. Because I can simply take whatever I need in my hobby space 
and put it in there. So convenient. You can also get these compatible hobby shelves that have removable sections to just slide them in there. Together with the paint case, it makes my hobbying so much more convenient. Like, seriously. So guys, if you are in the market for modular hobby shelves, or if you struggle with paint transportation, this is a great solution. So definitely check it out. And thank you Frontier Wargaming for sponsoring this video. Chimera paints provide a very unique experience. According to the manual, with these 13 paints, you are able to get any color in the existence. The paints are quite expensive, but they provide something very unique. All of them are made from just one pigment. Also, there is like 30 to 50% of pigment in every bottle. Standard hobby paints for the most part are a mix of multiple pigments, and because they are not as pure, Mixing them with other paints will get them more muddy and desaturated. This is not an issue here. Everything is perfectly saturated, perhaps too saturated. So while I would prefer to have more muted squeak, this one screams quite loudly with red. So having low saturation is a problem, but having too saturated result is a problem as well, at least for me. Now you can simply mix in some black and white to make it desaturated, but even after trying that, I couldn't get it just right, so I rolled with it. Also, these paints are super matte, which means that you won't get any artificial highlights or reflections from glossy surface. This is great, but on the other hand, it's much easier to get chalky finish with visible brush strokes. I have to say that the first few times I tried working with Chimera colors, I wasn't too happy. Working with them can be quite difficult if you are not used to matte paints, and many of these are also quite transparent. However, this time, these issues were not as bad. And I have to say that I am very pleased with the result. Vallejo. Vallejo? Yeah, Vallejo is great. 10 out of 10. Next. Oh, you, you want me to talk about it? O okay, I guess the paints are quite matte. I mean, at least the model color, that's for sure. Oh, you know what? I didn't mention this yet. I am using one brand each time, but multiple ranges. So I am using model color, but game color as well, which is more for gaming purposes, because the paint is more satin, bright and durable. And that's usually the case. Many brands have ranges that are more for fantasy miniatures for gaming, and those are more satin and durable. But that doesn't matter for this video, because I am comparing brands, not each individual range. But yeah, Vaiho is universal and consistent, actually pretty much like AK Interactive. Next! Scale 75. You can actually thank Scale 75 for this video, because it was their new artist range that made me do it. I am part of several Discord groups and in some of them they spammed last Scale 75 Kickstarter campaign featuring these exact paints. And people always do this when a company releases new paints. And quite frankly, you don't f***ing need it. But anyway, I got those new artist range colors, just the primaries, and was pretty excited at first because they feature just one pigment. So you can get huge variety of colors with these as well, but the issue is that they don't cover too well. Because of this, I ran into the same issue that I experienced with Army Painter. With the red I mixed from yellow and magenta primaries, it was very problematic to get a nice opaque layer. In the past, when I used their standard range, I had the opposite problem. The opacity was great, but I got chalky finish. But this isn't a huge problem, because I got some reds from their fantasy range, and it covered quite well. On the other hand, it had quite a satin finish. So let me get this straight. When I used their standard range, it covered well, but got easily chalky. Their fantasy range covered well, but was satin. And their artist range got nice saturation, but it was like spreading butter on your mini. Now sure enough, I managed to finish this quick and the result is fine, but it's kinda surprising how I always run into problems with scale colors. But to be fair, later on I found out that those artist range colors are quite nice for wet blending. This is because it takes them quite a while to fully dry. Nice gradients for sure, but too much of a hustle to figure out for me. Pro Acryl. These paints are powerful. Hold on a minute. This is magenta? This magenta is not magenting. What the f- Together with Chimera Colors and Standard Scale 75, these are the most matte paints I know. The pigmentation of these is also very strong. I remember that when I tested them for the first time, I accidentally spilled some on my t-shirt. 
it's forever ruined. Because they are so intensely pigmented, people often use them for wet blending, and it works very well in that way. I didn't really try to wet blend them, because I was focused on layering. Using them like that worked pretty nicely overall, but there is one disadvantage when it comes to matte paints, aside from chalkiness. I find that with matte paints, your brush strokes are much more visible. So if you are after smooth gradients without glazing or wet blending, it might take you a while to smooth everything out. Overall, it was a pleasant experience painting with Pro Acryl, even though I would have better time wet blending them. Now comes the important part of this video. I took a photo of my finished Squig Hopper miniatures and posted them to various places. This is the photo and this is the correct order. I am not sure how about you, but to me, they all look fairly decent. The question is, are people able to tell which brand has been used for each mini? Posting this picture to various Discord groups and Facebook, I received a variety of answers. After going through all of them, there were two common trends. First commonality is that people often guessed number 6 to be either Chimera or Pro Acryl. Next, Citadel and Army Painter were often associated with number 4 or 7, so people thought that those are quite glossy slash satin. And I mean, Citadel surely isn't super matte, but it isn't exactly super glossy either. The natural conclusion of these commonalities is that many people were easily able to tell which brand is glossy or satin and which one is matte, for the most part. But somehow people underestimate Citadel. I guess. But overall, many people said that every squig looks quite good. And you know, it's not like I put less effort into any of them, because I want all of them to look great for my army. So when I say that paint brand doesn't matter, what do I mean by that? In what way does it not matter? Perhaps you are able to see some differences when it comes to finish, and working with each brand is slightly different, but especially if you paint armies, all of these brands will work for you to get the job done. In that sense, paint brand doesn't really matter as much. But the main message of this video is that you really don't have to buy too many paints or obsess over picking the right one, because it still comes down to your skill. And if you are really not sure which brand to pick, just pick AK Interactive or Vallejo because you can't go wrong with it. However, if you need this advice, I assume that you might be a beginner painter, and that's completely fine, but I fully realize how confusing it might be getting into this hobby. So, if you are a new painter or you just wanna refresh some skills, I have made a video on how to start painting minis if you have zero experience and it should help you with all the tools and the entire process. And see you there!